I'm with Jim in terms of uh, the the limited usefulness of the Fed minutes. Mostly, what that what that uh, does when it comes out each time is it reinforces what everyone already thought. So it's like a uh, it's it's like a uh, an ink blot, and we all read into it what we want to read into it. If you're ever looking for some great comedy, go back and read the Fed minutes from 2018 when they were trying to shrink the balance sheet with uh, QT and raise rates relentlessly um, and see how that turned out. So I don't really worry too much about it. The existing home sales number is notable. So it dropped 6% in July, which is now the sixth straight month of declines, uh, the slowest pace of sales. You have to go back to November 2015 outside of the actual height of the pandemic. And the reason why that's so important to keep an eye on is the multiplier effect there. Um, So while it is slowing... Uh, in terms of transactions, prices are not coming down. So existing home sales are still higher than 10% year over year, which is way too hot if the Fed is really going to get its way in the most important component of the inflation data. So it's nice that you have some cooperation with gas prices coming down, of course. Uh, put a pin in that because this uh, this fall, we know that uh, Putin is going to start playing games with gas supply all over the world. But fine, we'll take that. You're still not getting what you need in terms of cooperation from overall financial conditions and from owner's equivalent rent and housing prices. It's very, very slow to come down. So far, you've slowed transactions. You have not slowed the price and what it costs to be in a home. And I think that that continues to be problematic. And it's a very big part of the economy, not just the selling of homes themselves, but all of the related and ancillary business around that. So... Uh, I think that that's going to be a continuing issue. It is not doing what the Fed needs it to do. And you had mortgage rates back off. So if the Fed is is talking hawkish and putting through um, some of the biggest rate hikes that we've had to put through going back to 1994, but financial pro- uh, conditions are still easing, meaning uh, meaning we're, we're getting the cost to borrow come down and the stock market is flying It prolongs the cycle. It makes the Fed's job harder. It's not helping that everybody is now trying to trade in anticipation of the dovish pivot. So that's that's where we're stuck right now. Um, I think one of the most notable things going on in the market overall, outside of energy being back to outperforming, is just the incredible strength in Apple. And Apple now 7.5% of the S&P. Alone among the fangs, it is the only stock that continues to grow in terms of its importance to the index. Yeah. And that stock, Josh, I think, Josh, is masking a lot of weakness. So we're going we're to Apple. Yeah, well, I won't say later. much more about that. Okay. All I right. won't say much more about that. Let me wrap up. Look, look, this is, in my view, if you look back over the last year, and I've said this before, this is not the moment to uh, get FOMO and want to play catch up. And, and start putting on aggressive long positions. When you've got the VIX down around 20, that has historically been a better time to calm down, not get excited. And, and that's where I think we are today. All right, Brent, over to you. Any big takeaways from those Fed minutes? No. I mean, I think it was a big nothing burger. I mean, they said, you know, we have, we're going to act with resolve, but at the same time data dependent. I do think what's, what's still incredible to me is, you know, the Fed has... I think close to 400 PhDs working for them. So I would call it one of the most well-funded hedge funds out there. And still it's so incredible to me that looking historically, they've engineered a soft landing, which means raising rates and not going into recession under 10% of the time. I agree with Jim that the onus now is on the bears to, to refute what the market is saying that, you know, the, I think the market is saying inflation's easing, the Fed's gonna pivot, and we're going to have a Goldilocks type economy. But really where I question that is if you go back in time, the Fed rarely, if ever, stops quantitative, stops tightening when CPI is above Fed funds. And so you could drive a truck through that. Even if CPI comes back in the latter half of the year to 5%, Fed funds are going to be still well below that. So I, I am in the camp that the Fed is going to be persistent person hand in the market whether it's quantitative tightening, which is going to stop, and or raising rates. And so to me, thinking that we will raise to all-time highs by the end of the year, although that could happen, 
I just feel the probability of that is low just because to hit on one thing Josh talked about, you know, the housing in the market, that owner equivalent rents is literally they call they make us they call they call people at their homes and say, What do you think you can rent your house for? <laughs> and so we all we all know that we're undersupplied in housing. And when you're asking people who own a home for 30 years what can they rent the house for, it's just bad data. And so I think that inflation is gonna stay sticky, not only from energy, but from that owner equivalent rent, which literally do they're doing surveys that you would think they'd be doing in the 70s in 2022. And so I think um, I, I'm in the camp that I think there's a wide range of outcomes and that housing is going to keep inflation much higher than people think. All right, Weiss, came to you last on purpose. Uh, you know, Jim's right here. He basically called you out and kind of called out your bear case. Are you still holding on to that right now? I, I don't feel Jim called me out. I, I have no idea what he's talking about, that the bears have to prove their case. I don't even know what that means. So here's what I tell you. Here are the facts. The facts are that you've... The, the facts are that you've got a Fed that's got one objective in mind, and that's to slow the economy. To say all of a sudden they're data dependent is ridiculous. They're always data dependent. They don't pull it out of their butts and say, we're going to tighten right now. They're looking at the data. So that's always going to be the case. So the market multiple right now is 18 and a half times. The consumer is not in great shape. As a matter of fact, consumer discretionary earnings were down 18 percent in the second quarter. And we've heard from Walmart and we've heard from Target. And, you know, I, 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 I'm not going to use words like day class A. And I appreciate Jim being on the show today. Whoa. I can only imagine as usual table, his usual table, Laberna Den must have been booked. So thanks. Thanks for taking the time <laughs> to join us. 